What's going on guys and welcome to today's video and yeah if you saw from the thumbnail or the title or whatever Cheap Jeep is currently listed for sale but before we get into that I thought we would go through this thing and do a video talking about the vehicle setup what's been done to this thing the suspension the engine the skid plates absolutely everything now this is going to be an incredibly long detailed video that really is probably going to only apply to WJ people that are putting together a Jeep. But if you're not a WJ person and interested in what somebody would spend a lot of money on their old 1999 Jeep Grand Cherokee on, you can also follow along. But like I said, Jeep Jeep is currently listed for sale. Now I've got it on our local Facebook marketplace. And like I've done with all of my rebuilder Jeeps, once I'm done with them, I end up selling them, moving them on to their new home. Now this was never a rebuilder Jeep. This was my personal Jeep that I bought broken years and years ago, put it together and have slowly built this thing into being an incredible daily driver that you can go 80 miles an hour down the highway with, and then also off-road down the trail all day long and it drive 80 mile an hour back home without any care in the world. And it's four doors and it just works incredibly well. Now, what am I potentially selling cheap Jeep for? Yeah, it's another Jeep, but we'll see if it actually materializes. I don't want to count my chickens before they hatch, but if it doesn't sell, I really don't care. It's going to stay on the channel, but I will have a link down in the description to the Facebook marketplace listing where you can read this entire ridiculous long list. So like I said, even if you are not interested in buying cheap Jeep, this is going to be a interesting video on me explaining my ultimate WJ setup. Now, is this the tallest, biggest WJ on 35 inch tall tires with long arms that can go up the Rubicon Trail? No, no, this is a very, very streetable, daily drivable, because I do daily drive it every single day to work, but it also just works extraordinarily well off-road and really makes people kind of question a boring looking soccer mom Jeep going down the trail. Now, keeping all of this in mind, this build has always tried to remain OEM plus. And by OEM plus, I mean kind of factory-ish looking, not aftermarket bumpers, not anything too ridiculous and crazy. Yes, it's gotten a little bit tall over the years, but that's kind of always been the goal in my mind is OEM plus. So to start things off, let's go through the suspension and skid plates and then we'll jump into the engine we'll jump into the interior we'll go we'll go through literally everything all right guys so starting up here in the front corner um, this jeep used to be on a two inch spacer lift with some upcountry springs that has now been swapped out with a four inch iron rock off-road spring it did get new upper and lower spring isolators and the big thing that this does have is the Iron Rock off-road lower weld-on spring buckets, which repairs any crusty, rusty lower spring buckets on this thing. Now for my shocks, I am running the Bilstein 5100 here in the front, and this is actually the two inch lift shocks, which you would think is a little bit short with our four inch springs, but I did convert these bar pin shocks with the Iron Rock off-road bar pin eliminators and then added little spacers underneath the bar pin eliminator. So this thing has a good, good amount of down travel in the front suspension, even though we are on a two inch lift shock. Since we've added all of this to the bottom, it works really, really well. Now again, up in the front, like we have talked about, this, ha this has Jeep Wrangler JL rear factory sway bar links on the front. They are an amazing factory upgrade for a WJ. They pretty much bolt right on and are a very nice factory part. Now onto control arms. We've got core 4x4 adjustable lower arms. Now these arms are the OEM rubber style bushings at each end. They are not the heim joints. They are not anything like that. I want this to be again very OEM ride and you are not going to get that with noisy heim joints. Again, these are the OEM rubber style bushings. Moving up to the upper control arm, we are still running a factory style upper control arm, but both ends of the upper control arm have brand new OEM style bushings. Now guys, real quick here on the wheel, I did have a set of custom made four millimeter um, wheel spacers that are 
correctly hub sized here. Now you're wondering why am I only running a four millimeter spacer? I did not want a bolt on style spacer with multiple inches of spacing, but I wanted as much spacer as possible with still having really good thread engagement. Now this four millimeter helps just a little bit on keeping wheels and tires off of body and suspension components on the street, off road, etc. So that's why we've got this teeny little four millimeter spacer front and rear on this thing. Now guys, jumping under the front here, we've got a lot of different items here. The main thing here with the lift, we've got a JKS adjustable track bar on this thing dialed in to make that axle nice and centered with our lift. Now another custom touch you can see here and here are TerraFlex bump stop extensions. Now these are not for a WJ, these are actually for JK rears, but these are bump stop extensions that I have converted and added onto the WJ to work in contact with our factory upper bump stops and works again very, very well off-road. Continuing our Wrangler parts on this thing, we have a Jeep Wrangler JL steering dampener, which I've shown on the channel that is currently mocked into place and again, works very, very well. Now, normal maintenance things, this does have new front tie rod ends, drag link ends, all the normal things to help the Jeep drive nice and happy down the road. Now guys, jumping into the rear suspension. Again, we've got our Iron Rock Off-Road four inch springs. We've got our core four x four adjustable lower control arms, again, with the OE style rubber bushings at each end. Continuing on with bushings, we have a factory upper control arm with new bushings on each uppers. We have a new upper control arm bushing and a Goliath off-road two and a half inch spacer there under that ball joint to make sure our control arm angle is nice and happy. Now for shocks, we are running a Fox 2.0 from a Jeep Wrangler JL. And this thing works really, really darn well with the extended and collapsed links with the current lift setup. And complementing that is a set of extended rear sway bar links. Now these are longer than the JT Gladiator, Gladiator links that I normally am installing on my rebuilder Jeeps. Now for bump stops, again, another Jeep Wrangler part. This is a Jeep Wrangler JL TerraFlex one inch front bump stop extension that has been added and modified onto the back of this WJ. And it works very, very well with the factory bump stop here on the bottom. Again, we've got our four millimeter spacers here in the back, just keeping that same stance front and rear. Now guys, let's talk real quick about wheels and tires before we jump into the skid plates. I've got two sets of wheels and tires for this thing because I don't want a destroyed beat up wheel for my street set. And correspondingly, I don't want to be lugging around big, huge, heavy mud terrains on the street. Because what we found out with, if you are actually wanting to go off-roading, if you are wanting to crawl rocks, get through anything nasty, you pretty much need a mud terrain. We, we have wheeled quite a bit with previous all terrains and man, you just really find yourself floundering trying to get through things that the mud terrain just walks through. So that's why we've got two wheels and tires here. Now, yes, both sets of five um, wheels and tires do go with Cheap Jeep, um, but on the street, I am running a 265-70R17 Toyo Open Country AT3. Now, why I picked the Open Country is because it is the lightest weight all-terrain in this size. This is not the LT version. This is just the P version of this wheel and tire and it is considerably lighter than any of the other all terrains in its class so that's why we've got the toyo open country at and because when you are wanting a nice daily drivable wheel and tire setup you are wanting something that isn't outrageously heavy like a big huge heavy lt tire because that's just hurting fuel economy acceleration braking handling just absolutely everything and it is pretty funny driving the jeep going back and forth between a very lightweight wheel and tire versus this very heavy E load range wheel and tire. So again, for our off-road set of wheels and tires, we have the same set of Jeep Wrangler JK Fat Fives, as I call them, because I honestly think this is the best darn looking wheel on a WJ. It just looks very correct, makes it look more modern, 
and they are extremely plentiful on Facebook. So for the off-road tire, we have an LT255 75R17. Now this was um, old JK Rubicon tire size or current Willys JL tire size, but these are a Firestone Destination MT2 here. And again, just a very meaty off-road tire that works very, very well off-road. You can air them down with the thick sidewalls and just never worry about tearing them up. Yes, the Jeep does feel more labored when you bolt these big, huge heavy wheels and tires on all four corners, but that doesn't matter on your off-roading trips. You are very, very happy for the traction here on the Jeep. All right, guys, so it is time to talk about skid plates and armoring underneath this Jeep. WJs are kind of a uh, red-headed stepchild of the Jeep world, and it is relatively hard to find decent skid plates for certain items. But I think here what I've got is the best skid plate package possible for a WJ. Now, yes, one of these is extremely one-off and custom, but it is kind of my crown jewel of this Jeep, and I'm very, very proud of it. So starting up here at the front, we have a trail-forged front radiator skid plate cross member replacement piece. This is a very much of a commitment mod as you are cutting the factory radiator support out of the vehicle and installing this skid plate. So guys, where the factory radiator cross member would hang down is about two inches lower than where this skid plate lives. Like I said, you cut it out and install this into some current holes in the frame of the vehicle. So there's not really any cutting chopping to install this thing other than cutting that cross member out. But the big huge gain with this trail forged radiator cross member skid plate is like I said, two inches of gained front bumper ground clearance, which is absolutely amazing when you're off road. Now, one custom thing I did was add a set of OEM tow hooks into this trail forge skid plate. These do not fit normally. I had to do a lot of cutting, trimming, custom modification to get factory OE style tow hooks onto this trail forge skid plate. So guys, here you can see that skid plate bolted to the factory frame rails, and then it goes nice and flat, nice and high under that radiator. Now guys, moving one step back to our transmission, we have the Taboo Customs 545 RFE transmission skid plate. Now this thing is an absolute beast. Now it does bolt to the factory transmission pan mounting locations, but it does come with the longer bolts provided so you have correct thread engagement. And like I said, this thing is an absolute beast. There is no loss in ground clearance under this thing, and it is extremely strong and has been used off-road. Now guys, one step further back is our Iron Rock off-road high clearance cross member replacement. And if you have not seen this thing, it is an absolute game changer on the WJ platform. Again, this thing moves the bottom part of the cross member basically two inches higher and gains you a ton of ground clearance where it is absolutely needed underneath a WJ right there in the middle. Now this does not move the drive line angles any. It is just a very, very nicely um, designed and engineered cross member that bolts right in place with no other modifications and just gains you a ton of ground clearance. Now, like I said, my, uh, my crown jewel here of armoring under the Jeep, this is a very, very customized Rusty's Off-Road WJ transfer case skid plate. So like I said, this is just a normal buy it off the shelf skid plate from Rusty's Off-Road, but I have very painstakingly modified this thing to basically tuck it up multiple inches higher than it is from the factory. Now you guys can see here where this piece of metal is versus this piece of metal. Those two used to be one piece. So we moved the skid plate multiple inches higher, but the issue was the transfer case does hang down lower than the skid plate. So I built this box here and basically have the transfer case pushing through the bottom of the skid plate. But how I've designed this box with ramps on the front and the back, it will not get hung up off-road and just slides off of obstacles. It is such a cool piece. And again, I am just outrageously proud of this skid plate because it is a one-off thing and it took me 
way, way too long to do. Now guys, moving to the back, we do have a OEM fuel tank skid plate. Now no, this is not the super thin one that rusts out all the time. This is the option skid plate group fuel tank skid plate. This thing is super, super stout and we have drugged this thing all over rocks and it does not dent, even with the WJ's weight. Now last but not least, we do have a OEM new trailer hitch on the back and that thing also works as a skid plate keeping the bumper off of a lot of obstacles and using that basically as a slider now guys let's talk about driveline with this jeep not even talking about the engine talking about driveline this jeep is a 242 hd transfer case swapped wj now this makes this thing an extremely rare WJ because the 4.7 liter V8 often came with the full-time 247J transfer case. It is a pretty rare Jeep to find, at least around here, a 242HD 4.7 liter WJ. Now that gets you the two-wheel drive, the four-wheel drive part-time, the four-wheel drive full-time, the neutral, and the four-wheel drive low position. That just makes the Jeep a lot more fun i guess you now have a two-wheel drive position you could go out and do burnouts or donuts or play in the mud <laughs> and then be able to lock that thing in four-wheel drive high if need be if you were out off-road and had a rear drive shaft failure you'd be able to pull that rear drive shaft lock this thing in four-wheel drive high and drive yourself home in front wheel drive with the old transfer case, there is no lock position in the four-wheel drive high or all-wheel drive position. You would be dead on the road and not be able to get home. So besides the fact of it now having two-wheel drive position, it is a lot more reliable or safe to go three hours away off-road for the day and come home because if, again, you have a front drive shaft, a rear drive shaft, an axle shaft failure of any shape or sort, you're able to lock this thing in four wheel drive and continue at least progressing forward. Now for axles, the front obviously is still the Dana 30, but this was a factory trailer tow Jeep. So it does have 373 gears. And this just recently has been swapped to a Aussie locker in the front. Now, yes, you do have a little bit of clicking and clacking when you are making turns even in two wheel drive, but off road, it is an absolute beast on the rocks, on the ledges, it just moves. We finally got to take this thing off-road with the new Aussie locker and oh my gosh, it was, it was just ridiculous how much of a change this thing is having a locker in the front. Now, this Jeep was factory open differentials front and rear, but in the rear, we've got our Dana 44A with again, our 373 gears, and it has been Verilock swapped, which again, works very well in the rear Dana 44 since those clutches are a little bit larger. Now for drive shafts, this thing has been swapped to the factory WJ double cardan front drive shaft. So it does not have the CV style drive shafts anymore. And it is a true U-joint front and rear with a double cardan there at the transfer case. Now guys, moving on to the engine, this recently undertook a very extensive upgrade or refreshing of the top end of the motor. Um, cylinder heads were pulled off. They were machined. I staked the valve seats, which if you're a 4.7 person, you know how important that is. It did get 2008 4.7 liter camshafts, which are even more aggressive than the factory 4.7 HO cams. Correspondingly, we threw 2008 rocker arms on this thing with a fresh set of Mellings lifters all the way around. Now this 99 being an early 4.7 has the very small throttle body, but it did get swapped to the 2003 and up 68 millimeter throttle body here under the swapped 4.7 liter high output plenum and air box. Now when the engine was apart, I threw a fresh set of Mopar timing chains and guides. So that is as fresh as it can be. And again, going back together, it got a set of GM Ecotec 12 hole four cylinder fuel injectors, which are a lot better for atomizing the fuel than the factory two hole fuel injectors. Now, another big thing that this 4.7 liter got while it was apart was valve stem seals. This thing was an absolute smoky mess out on the trail because any 4.7 with over 100,000 miles, the valve stem seals are gone. I don't care what you say, they're all gone over 100,000 miles. So this now has a fresh set of valve stem seals, 
sitting under a brand new set of 4.7 liter HO intake springs and standard output exhaust springs. Now for exhaust with the engine, we have a 2004 4.7 liter mid pipe, which basically works as a cat delete on this vehicle. And then in place of the factory WJ muffler, we have a Jeep Wrangler JL resonator. It is super small, tucked up out of the way and works really well off-road because it doesn't grab rocks like the factory muffler and it makes really, really good noise. Now, yes, with the engine rebuild, all the corresponding gaskets got replaced. Head gaskets, valve cover gaskets, intake gaskets, oil fill gaskets, timing cover gaskets, front crankshaft seal, just everything that you had apart obviously got replaced on this thing. Another thing that has been replaced on this engine is OEM factory Mopar motor mounts on this thing. Any of these old WJs, the motor mounts are pretty tired and worn out at this point. So again, this thing has fresh Mopar motor mounts. Now guys, moving to the interior. This is a very high trim level Laredo. We've got leather seats. We had the factory Infinity Gold sound on this thing, the leather wrap steering wheel, all of those things that are kind of found on higher trim level Grand Cherokees. But the really, really good thing about this being a Laredo is that it has manual temperature. It does not have the auto temp air. The auto temp air is a 100% fail rate on the doors in the dash braking. This with manual temp has vacuum controlled doors. And in my 15 plus years of working at the shop on Jeeps, I have never once replaced doors on a manual temp Jeep. So take that as a very good thing about being a Laredo. Another thing that was added is 2004 Laredo aluminum dash trim. This originally had the fake wood trim on the dash, which didn't age very well, but now has the nice factory OEM aluminum trim all the way across the dash. Now the radio is a OEM style aftermarket Bluetooth radio that is pretty decent, but I again will throw the factory radio in this thing, but it at least has Bluetooth and you could make phone calls and stream music and all of those things. Now, of course we did swap the shifter with that 242 HD. So it has the correct detents and shifter positions there on the console. Now guys, another cool thing that this has been swapped to is the 2001 limited gauge faces. It still has the factory cluster in this thing, but I went ahead and gutted both clusters and swapped gauge faces and needles off of the one year only 2001 limited. They're a really cool white face with a very bright orange needle. Now jumping back to the front here, we do have the 04 grill, the 04 Laredo grill swapped with the header panel. So you can have the newer updated 04 grill. We did recently throw the factory OEM uh, cabin air filter kit in this thing, and it does now have a new windshield in this thing. So guys, if you're still here watching at the end of this extremely long detailed video, I very much appreciate it. Um, if you are putting together your own WJ, I hope you could kind of follow some of my inspiration or, you know, things that I have found that work really well over the years with this thing. Again, an amazing factory driving daily driver that still can go off road and follow anything that we go out and off road with. So guys, like I said, at the time of filming this video, Cheap Jeep is currently listed on our local Wichita, Kansas Facebook marketplace. I'll throw a link down in the description. If you are interested to read through the incredibly long, ridiculous list there and see what all I've done to this thing. And uh, yeah, if, if you're in the market for a WJ that you can daily drive, that you wouldn't feel bad about driving across country, that you could then off road, uh, I don't know that you could put one together any cheaper than what this thing is currently listed for. So I don't know, check it out if you're in the market or like I said, if you are putting one together, go in there, look at all my tips, look at all my tricks that I've done on this thing for relatively inexpensive parts and pieces going on this and making it work really, really well off-road. So guys, I hope you're not angry and unsubscribe because Cheap Jeep is listed because there'll always be WJs on the channel. I think I'm currently messaging like two or three different people on Facebook Marketplace trying to buy broken WJs out of their yard, but they want way too much for a broken vehicle that's been sitting for 10 years because that's the story of my life. And guys, if Cheap Jeep sells and we have a new Jeep product here in the driveway, we'll of course be doing all the same stuff. We'll be going off-roading. We'll be doing mods because 
what we do here. And I'll of course be bringing you guys along. So thank you so much for watching through this incredibly long video, talking about my pride and joy, Jeep Jeep. And uh, yeah, maybe one of you guys will own this thing. And yeah, it, it's my Jeep. I love this thing. It, it's gonna be really sad to see this thing go. So again, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.